Hello and welcome to the course on dealing with materials data. For past few sessions we are going through the application of design of experiments uh, for uh, metallurgical uh, applications and uh, we are learning it uh, through the case study on uh, optimization of uh, production of nano titania powder through uh, microwave plasma synthesis system. So uh, let us review. We found uh, that uh, when the response uh, is in a percentage has a, a limited uh, uh, range in uh, when it varies from 0 to 100 only. Uh, to meet the assumption of normality of uh, error, we have to make a logic transformation of the response variable and carry out the analysis uh, through with the logic transformed response. Then we talked about how to estimate the prediction interval. We of course worked out how to find the factors that are important by conducting a hypothesis testing that uh, a regression parameter beta i is equal to 0. Then looking at the t values and the p values we can decide whether uh, we have to reject the hypothesis or accept the hypothesis. Here rejected hypothesis is of importance uh, because that says that that factor is important uh, in this uh, predicting the efficiency of the system. So now you see the importance of rejection region because rejecting the hypothesis gives us lot of information compared to accepting the hypothesis. Accepting the hypothesis says that, uh, that that particular factor has no effect. But when you reject the null hypothesis, you come to know that that particular factor has an effect on the response value. So we looked into the tables and then we also looked into the analysis of variance table to understand lack of fit uh, because of the two replica we could find out if your uh, the, uh, the experiment uh, the model has any lack of fit our again hypothesis was there is no lack of fit and we in this case we accepted the hypothesis. And therefore, we can say that there is no lack of fit in the hypothesis. We remember there were two responses. So this time we want to continue the same process with the response of percentage NRTS. And remember now we are wiser people. So since NRTS is also in a percentage value, we are going to take its logic transform transformation and then do the analysis. And then we have the validation trials uh, putting the two responses together and we will come to the final conclusion for this particular case study. So let us start here this is the table for uh, estimating the effect of each parameter using T distribution for uh, logic transformed NRTs, percentage NRTs. So we are wiser now, we have already done the logic transformation of percentage NRTs response and then we are doing the, uh, we are doing the analysis of the data. And uh, here what we find is that uh, again we are uh, giving the this is an important, I am I'm sorry I should have made it in red but it is not in red. So here once again we are, uh, our hypothesis is that beta is equal to 0, this is our null hypothesis and alpha value is 0 0.05. So if P is less than 0 0.05, we say that reject null hypothesis. It means that for these values that is for plasma gas flow rate and the two interaction of plasma gas flow rate with feed rate and plus additional gas flow rate with carrier gas flow rate are the important or are the places where 
our H0 is rejected, it means that the coefficients, uh, the beta coefficients are not 0. In all other places we can say that beta coefficients are 0, it has no effect on the logit transformed percentage NRTS and therefore it uh, reduces the model uh, by having only these one main effect, one main factor and the two interaction factors. Here we have once again shown it by the graphical method that if there is a systematic error because of the regression equation and then there is a random error due to epsilon. Uh, this line shows if the model was only due to the random error, all data points should fall on this line. As farther they go, you realize that these are the points of importance. Almost all points are far away here, but we have from this table we find that uh, when you consider alpha is equal to 0 0.05, that is your uh, level of significance as 0.05 percent uh, uh, sorry 0 0.05 or 5 percent then these are the three values which are of importance. Here it shows the main effect plots and the uh, interaction plot. You can see that there are many interactions showing up but we must remember that finally it is this process of uh, rejecting the null hypothesis. Uh, by comparing the p value with the pre decided alpha is most important. This is the type 1 error please remember p is a uh, p is probability of type 1 error. Just recall your hypothesis testing, recall your hypothesis testing and regression analysis. This is an amalgamation of all of them. So that is why we are going through a case study where you can actually see how it gets applied, each and every aspects of it gets applied. So these are the plots. This is the analysis of variance table after logit transformation and uh, as you can see here also it shows that uh, there is uh, the main effects are not important, this is not important. You see again here alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and uh, our testing of hypothesis is that main effects, the variance caused by the main effect and the variance caused by the error, if this ratio is f which is large enough then you say that it has an effect, okay, the main that is there is, uh, there is an effect of the uh, main factors, the main factors, okay. So here what we are saying is that though there we found that uh, uh, plasma gas flow rate is important, here we find that main effects have are not significant, okay. So main effects are not significant, however the interactions are significant because this value is less than alpha which is 0 0.05. This is so because it is greater than alpha which is, is equal to 0 0.05. So this shows that main effects, this implies that main effects, effects or factors Do not change your uh, variation in the value significantly compared to the residual error. Whatever error is coming, the sigma that is variation caused by the error and the variation caused by the main effect are very similar. While this says that the error caused by the two way interaction is more significant, is larger than the effect caused by the error. So here again we are taking an F ratio, this is an ANOVA table. Again if you look at our hypothesis is here is that uh, H0 there is no lack of fit.
alpha is 0 0.05 and this is greater than 0 0.05 and therefore we say that H not not rejected. These two are two different things so please remember and therefore this says that there is no lack of fit. So, the model that we have chosen completely defines completely gives the explanation of logic transformed percentage and attest. These are the confirmation to the assumption on error. So, this the first plot shows that uh, it is a random error. This also shows that it has no effect of the uh, what fitted values it has taken it is also random. This is random with respect to observational order. So, there is no systematic changes because of the observations made. Here it says that there is no systematic change because of the values that we have fitted in the model and this shows that it is actually distributed as normal because we have plotted, plotted the standardized residuals. Uh, residual error for a percentage NRTs, of course, logic transform percentage NRTs on the normal probability plot and it falls on the straight line and therefore it is uh, normally distributed. So, our assumptions are also correct. Then as we did in the past, we have to select the levels. So, now please remember that we have to actually select only the combination because this is not important however it is coming up it is plasma flow rate at a high level and feed rate at a low level will give you the best percentage of NRTs and the additional flow rate at a high level and carrier gas flow rate at a low level give you the best possible uh, percentage NRTs. So, our selection is that uh, the if you if you separate out the interaction level it says that plasma flow rate gas flow rate should be at high additional gas flow rate should be also kept at high uh, feed rate should be kept at low and the uh, carrier gas flow rate should be kept at low. With this we perform the validation runs we find the interval for 5 validation run trials. Please recall what we had done the calculations in the past the same applies here and for the logic transformed variable we find that this is the interval the predicted interval 95 percent it is interval estimation for 5 runs with this combination of the, uh, the factors. Then if you revert back you take the inverse logic transformation it says that it falls from 77 to 92 percent uh, interval where the percentage NRTs should fall. The 5 validation trials are carried out and the average is 77.4 and therefore it falls here and therefore it validates the design. So, as such our job is done again we have to ask ourselves a question. Is it everything ok? It should be ok. We did the you know we found the best combination of uh, factor and level to find the uh, highest efficiency and we found the best combination of factor and level to find the highest percentage and attest. What are they? They are given here, but if you look at it there is a problem. Look at the problem. Here in the first case for the percentage efficiency we are saying that keep plasma flow gas flow rate at low while in percentage NRTs we say that you keep it at high. Additional gas flow rate here you say you keep it at low here you say that you keep it at high and carrier gas flow rate it says you keep it at high here we say that you keep it at low. So, what does it mean? It says that either you have highest efficiency of the uh, micro plasma uh, synthesis system or you have the maximum percentage NRTs you cannot have both. 
this is what it really says. And that you can see here because here if you look at the main effect plot also you see that the slopes are in different directions. So, if you are choosing maximum on both sides your level selections are exactly opposite. So, can we have both? We cannot. Conflict, conflicting level of plasma gas flow rate and additional gas flow rate. I am not even talking about carrier gas flow rate because in both the cases it has come only as an interaction. So, if, if this is the case then you can have high efficiency, but you cannot have high percentage of NRTS. So, you have to you cannot achieve both. So, what to do in this case? The conclusion as such is that conflicting designs uh, for uh, percentage highest percentage efficiency and highest percentage NRTS. So, either efficiency is high or NRTS is high, but not both. This is your conclusion, but in reality when you want to implement it you have to give some solution. At least you must give some recommendation. So, the recommendation would be let the experimenter decide. In your case if you are the experimenter you have to take a call whether you want a high efficiency or you want a high percentage NRTS in production and then decide what is your loss what is your percentage loss. Generally percentage loss is decide, defined in this manner. Suppose you decide that you want the high efficiency, then you have to know what is your loss with respect to percentage NRTS. Had the percentage NRTS been kept at the highest, your mean would have been mu 0. So, had your percentage NRTS would have been kept at highest its mean would have been 84.95 and but now that you have decided that you want a high efficiency you are losing your mean value from 84.95 percent to 79.31 percent and this comes to I am sorry it is a negative 7 percent. So, I must uh, write it down it is negative ok. So, it is roughly negative 7 percent. So, if you are able to lose the 7 percent of high uh, percentage NRTS in your powder then you will have the highest efficiency. This is what should be your recommendation. This is what should be the recommendation at the end of the complete analysis uh, design and analysis of experiment. So, we come to this uh, next stage. Let us conclude the whole uh, session of uh, design of experiment case study. We went through it in 4 sessions totally. First question is that which process is amenable to design of experiment? We discussed that. Then we say that we must have a clear objective. We must keep the design simple. We while making the objective clear we must know what is response variable and what are the controllable factors, what are uncontrollable factors of which what is an error and what is an uncontrollable nuisance factor. We must use randomization, replication and blocking in order to control this. Randomization makes the experiment look like a whatever is happening naturally in life. Replication makes sure that the error between the sets of experiment is nullified or it is averaged out. Then the blocking says that if you know that there are nuisance factors such as shift or a person working in the you know a person defect uh, affect, affecting the process those things you block it out and keep a systematic uh, you know count it also as an error factor uh, uh, a controlled factor in it. Use blocks for the nuisance factor. Carry out the analysis by using the analysis of regression model and the analysis of variance together. But every time keep asking yourself is everything ok, is everything found, fine 
Also I would say that it is very common mistake to you know when you do this analysis using any of this uh, ready made software then you, you have to control your decimal points, you have to control your digit significant digits and finally never lose the overall sight of the overall picture before drawing the final conclusion. Like in this particular case we could have drawn the conclusion in two cases but then it does not really help the person who wants to really commercialize this uh, method of uh, microplasma synthesis of uh, titania, nano titania because you said that you will have maximum efficiency for certain levels and exactly opposite levels would give you the maximum percentage NRTS. In that case you have to ask him what is your preference. If it is per maximum efficiency then this is your loss towards percentage NRTS. If it is maximum percentage NRTS then this is your loss with respect to efficiency. This is what we discuss. I hope you have basically learned the application of hypothesis testing, regression analysis and analysis of variance during these sessions on design of experiment and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.